a short time ago, I was sharing with you guys that here in the church, we have these seasons. Churches have seasons. Just like we have summertime, wintertime, you know, and so forth. And um, I was speaking about a season that was coming of blessings and how we have experienced these seasons before. There are seasons where we're tried and tested. Amen? And one of the big problems that Christians can have, that's us, is that we do not recognize the different seasons. Things get hard and some people fall away from the Lord because they didn't recognize that season. You get it? But in that same season, others get stronger and grow because they're going through a trial and a test. What is the difference? The ones that grow strong in a time of trial and testing are the ones that knew the season. Did you know that? You have to know the time in your life when God is allowing you to be tested and tried so you can grow in an area. And then you also need to know the time of harvest where it's a time where the blessings of God just come upon you. You know what I'm saying? But we have to recognize all the different seasons. But we spoke about a season of blessings and, and so forth. And what we're going to be having is a special service. Uh, it'll be really powerful. And there is a time that the children of Israel were slaves. Amen? To the Egyptians. But then there's a time where God said, Pharaoh is going to know that there's a difference in between my people and his people. And all of a sudden, everything was reversed. And when the plagues were hit in Egypt, none of the plagues hit Gosha, and that's where God's people were living, in Gosha. When the water turned to blood in Egypt, where the Egyptians were, even though the children of God were in Egypt and the part called Gosha, you know that the water never turned to blood there. There is a time and it is a season that is upon us and is starting to grow right now. And it's a time when there's going to be a difference. And between God's people and those that need to accept Jesus. Did you get that? And many will come because they'll see that there's a difference. If they don't see a difference, they're not going to change. I'm just going to tell you that right now. But if they see a difference... If they see a difference, then they'll want it. And I'm telling you in the name of the Lord that that is a season that is starting to overtake. Glory to God. But it's going to be a, a service where we're going to let, I've been talking to different people here in the congregation, this service and, and the second service, and it's just been incredible blessings that have been happening. Incredible. No, no real logical explanation other than somebody touch the hem of his garment. 
my God, my God. And we're going to share with you what God has done for the church during this time where uh, we're not supposed to be prospering. How, how many of you know that not being able to have everybody all in, you know, in the building and have uh, spots and, and, and remember for a while we couldn't even come to church. How many of you know that that what? That that would bring finances down and so forth. And without any begging, I'll say begging, I should have heard a big amen, I'm begging. Without any begging, or conniving, or massaging, And we're going to give you the actual numbers of how God has blessed the church. But let me tell you this, in the history of the church, and we've been in existence for a long time. Did you get that? We've never had this much money. But we're going to give you a report on finances in the ministry. Glory to God. People from the congregation are going to come up and they're going to testify of what God has done. And then everybody is going to jump in the pool of the season. How many of you know that if you step outside this building, it's hot? We're going to step the same way that we all walk out of this building and we're all hot. We're going to step into a situation where God... I believe with all my heart, wants to bless all of his people because something is coming. And if we, if we are wise and we reap in this harvest, although it doesn't seem like harvest time, when the next cycle comes, and it's coming, and I'm not talking about what's going on right now. When the next cycle comes, we'll be ready, and there'll be a difference in between what's going on out there and what's going on in our lives. I'm telling you in Jesus' name. I, I like one of my favorite scriptures, and uh I was talking to, uh, to Joe and Joanna last night, and one of my favorite scriptures is this. I, the Lord just got in that mood where he's going to show himself mighty, and I love it when he made that statement, and he said, and they shall know that I can make a table, that I can spread a table in the wilderness. They'll know that I can provide a table in the wilderness. Hallelujah. But we have to know. We have to walk with Him, not walk doing our own thing and then, oh yeah, God's going to bless us. We'll see. You got it? It's good to know that you have God in the times of trouble. Me and my brother were in a dive off of La Jolla Cove, Cove in California. And uh, things got bad. A storm hit, and we're out there. You know, deep sea dive. And to make matters worse, this lovely, magnificent creature, which is called a shark, he was a minimum 14 foot decided to come over and sniff us. And I said, I, I'm so glad I know the Lord in the time of trouble. <laughs> and we're alive because He is good. He is good. He is good. So, we're going to be having a special service this coming Sunday. 
where we're going to brag on God. We're going to brag on God how in the middle of this whole mess, what He can do. And we're going to encourage everybody else to believe it and receive it. Amen? When they left Egypt, what does the Bible say? There was not a feeble one among them, not one. Do you know that they all left prosperous too? But little did they know that in the middle of all that prosperity and all that freedom, they were slaves, that there was another test. When they left Egypt, you know where they, they were going? A lot of people say the promised land. When they left Egypt, they were not going to the promised land. They were going to the mountain of the Lord to have an experience like they had never had in their life. And I'm telling you right now, glory to God, that we are heading to the mountain of the Lord to have an experience like we've never had. And that's what it's all about. Then the promised land came. Don't bypass the mountain of God and try to go straight to the promised land. You could get in trouble. You get it? The cloud won't follow you in the middle of the heat to keep you cool. And the pillar of fire won't be your light through the night. Don't ever forget that. You're hearing it right now. So we're going to be finishing uh, up our message on the soul. And this is what he does to my soul. We've always talked about the, the, the soul as a negative thing. Soul ties. The soulish nature. But you know that the soul is the most powerful thing that can co-work with God. The soul is also the most powerful thing that can co-work with evil. It can go in any direction. Why? Do you know what, the, you know what your essence is? Your free will. What is the essence of man or woman? Their free will. What your free will is, is the you, 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 you. Did you get that? Your free will. So what we're going to be studying when we talk about the soul is what does God do to my will? In the soul, all the information is gathered. All the spiritual information, all of the natural information. And then the soul makes a choice what to follow and what to do. The free will. But we've been under the impression that the free will is something that is just in limbo middle land. Got it? And that the free will is left alone to choose God or, the, or, or evil, or the devil. How many of you know that evil tries to influence you? That influence is to get your will under its submission, huh? Kind of like an election. Who are you going to vote for? By the way, I'm not too happy with our governor. I don't like the way that the voting laws are changing. I don't like the part about the 24-hour deal. So nobody's allowed to see any of the votes for 24 hours. So I'm not too happy with that. It sounds like a little bit like communism. I lived under communism. I don't understand why for 24 hours, you know, you don't have, uh, as I call them, witnesses. Does that sound right to you? 24 hours. Boy, 
you know what? I think, how about 24 hours? Hallelujah. And nobody and no alarms are in the bank. And I'm going to leave it at that. I don't care what party is in power or out of power or whatever. I think that whatever vote, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or Independent or whatever you are, got it? I think that we need to have some witnesses looking at the votes to verify. So we'll leave it on that. So we have a choice. <laughs> Amen? We have a choice because we have a free will. Now, I want you to understand that God has a very powerful influence over your free will. We have given more credit to the devil and for evil to have influence over our free will than we have God. But Job proved that wrong. Job proved that there's a relationship soul to soul with God or will to will with God. And it has nothing to do with what's happening on the outside. How many of you know he lost everything on the outside? How could he lose everything, even his health, and still choose to follow God? What is it? That's what we've been talking about through this whole series. If you haven't heard all the, the whole series, you can go on the internet. doesn't cost you a penny. If you want a copy uh, you know, of them, hard disk or whatever, or um, anyway, we have all kinds of different devices you can get them, then you can pay for that. But if you want, you can go to the, the internet and just watch it for free. You got it? Glory to God. So this is my case, I, 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 I'm, I'm like a lawyer right now, presenting God's case. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know that God has to have a witness on earth? Somebody that'll speak. Let's start with Jeremiah 32, 41. For those of you that haven't been here for all the uh, series, God has a soul. He says it all over the Bible. He says it in the New Testament, Old Testament, where he specifically says, my soul. We're going to read one of the verses. Are you ready? Now this is when God's soul, how many of you know that God the Father is the will of the Trinity? Jesus only did the will of the Father. Jesus, the Holy Spirit only does the will of who? The Father. Did you get that? Not my will, but thy will be done, Father. So the Father is the will of the Trinity. The super powerful oneness is that they all have the same will. Did you get that? That's what Satan tried to destroy. Temp, trying to tempt Jesus in the wilderness to separate them, to separate the will. You got it? So here we go. Here is God saying he has a soul. Yea, that means yes or see. Si. That's uh, not seen, but it's in Spanish. See, si, yes. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good. God says, I'm going to be happy because I'm going to do good stuff for them. Did you get that? It's going to make him happy to do something good. Do you know that God was happy when the children of Israel left Egypt? 
Or do you think he was weeping? Do you think he was happy when you gave your life to Jesus? Hallelujah. We're going to be doing the message on what makes God happy. We're going to have a list. Because we've been praying, God, give us the power to put a smile upon your face. The power to put a smile on God's face. Hallelujah. And I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will plant them in the land, whoo, surely, with my whole heart and with my whole what? Soul. That's with my whole spirit, the heart, and with my whole soul, his will. Did you get that? I just want to ask you one simple question. Do you want to be a target of God's happiness? Or do we want to be a target of rejecting it? Now, I want to ask you a question right now. I just played a little trick on you. Are you ready? Do you want to be in His will or outside of His will? You got excited when I said, making God happy and He blesses you. But you rejected the other in your heart, didn't you? Doing the opposite of God's will. Did you get that? Where He won't be happy and He won't be able to do what He wants to do. Out of his will. Right now, this is a test. Which one did, did your spirit and your soul, your will, lean to? I rest my case. God's will is more powerful in our lives than evil or the devil. For him to get us to reject what is best for us, he has to deceive us or trick us. I knew a man, my wife can tell you. He went on and his wife one time. And he got AIDS. And he died. Just one time. God was blessing his home. Blessing his children. But he was deceived. And he stood in front of me and he said, one time. And it reminded me of, uh, there was this black man that I used to go to and ask advice. He was wise. And I would go and, and I would, you know, go to talk to him because he, how many of you know that you need to go to the wise? Not somebody's out here whose life is a wreck and, and you're going to get advice from them. Yeah, I'm going to go to the bar and get drunk with the guy next to me and he's going to give me advice. Right. And he was a blues singer before he was saved. After he got saved, he became a, a powerful musician for the Lord. And 
my blood brother looked at me. And it was, the devil was trying to trick me. And you know how he answered me? I thought he was going to grab his Bible, but he grabbed his guitar. And he tuned it to sing me this song. And he looked at me and he said, Don't give the devil a ride. Don't give the devil a ride. Because if you let him drive, no, ride, he's going to want to drive. Don't give him a ride. He'll want to drive. And he put that guitar down and just looked at me. And I said, amen, brother. <laughs> I got my answer. God will speak to you in many different ways. But that song, God used to take my will, and it was so powerful, and shifted it. My life would have been a wreck. I would not be here today. So are you ready? Are you ready to be influenced, to be more like Jesus? Do you want it? Here we go. Psalms 19.7, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, converting the will. One of the biggest, ugliest lies from the pit of hell is that the law is ugly and cruel. Are you ready? We're going to get the women stirred up. Get them stirred up, that's it. It's over. Are you ready? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, because you're married. Is that a good law, women? That means your husband's not going to be having the hoochie-coo eyes. Men, do we, want a, do we want happy women that love God, that protect us with their prayers? Glory to God. That'll help us with the task that we have, and it's not an easy one. Except God and, and the intercessors. So what's so ugly about that? How about thou shalt not steal? You ever had anything stolen from you? I had a 1958 Harley Davidson stolen from me when I was a young man. I worked for that bike really hard. I didn't like it. I wasn't even saved. And you know what came out of my mouth? Stealing is wrong! See, the law of the Lord is beautiful. And it, it, it's designed to protect everybody from everybody. <laughs> Did you get that? It's designed to protect us from ourselves. But somehow when we mention the word, the law, the Ten Commandments, you know what the Ten Commandments does for us? I'm telling you, I'm presenting a case attacking Specific areas in our will that are lies that we've been taught in the cultures. Here we go. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. It converts your will to the will of God. It's perfect. It's the perfect thing for your will. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. It's the perfect thing for you to be like Jesus. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. You know what this is saying? That this is a sure thing. 
Don't you like a sure thing? It's a sure thing. And it makes a dummy like me wise. Without the Lord, I am a bl- an idiot. I know what it is to be an idiot. You have no idea the stupid things that your pastor has done before the law of the Lord converted my soul. He converts his soul. Psalms 23, 3. The 23rd Psalm, the most famous Psalm. He restores my soul. It was jacked up. Mm. I blew it. But he can restore you to right standing. And I'm going to stop and tell you this right now. There isn't a judge, a hypocrite, a hater that can point a finger at the true child of God. If God doesn't point the finger at you, there is no finger pointed at you. You'll find that in the book of Job also. Has he ever healed your soul? Oh no, you just you got saved and you never made a mistake in your life and you were you're the only one among us? As a matter of fact, wow. Do you know that when you find the perfect church, as soon as you join it, you'll ruin it? <laughs> I know people are looking for the perfect church. They haven't found it yet for years. Because every church they go to, they have to love that person. That one, you know who I'm talking about, that person, don't you? You know who that person is. It's that one that you can walk across the street and look at them and not like them and you don't even know their name. You just don't like them. Heals. Restores you. God is able to restore you. I can restore a motorcycle and God can restore my soul. I relate it to that, you know. A motorcycle breaks down, I just restore that area. Man, it runs great. Hallelujah. Psalms 21.1 Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. You know that you can lift your soul up to heaven? What do you think it means when the Bible says this? It says that we are seated seated together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. What do you think that means? That's your will, your soul, is in the heavenlies. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, my heart, my spirit, and my soul is going to have to take a trip to heaven to bring it down, huh? Thy will be done. Guess what I just did? I just went to heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And here's the will. Are you ready? (laughs) Unto thee, O Lord, will I lift up my soul. Don't ever forget that. You can lift your soul up to God. Next. Glory to God. Psalms 25, 20. Oh, keep my soul. You know he can keep your soul? He can keep you from falling? Has he ever kept you from falling? Raise your hands if he's ever kept you from falling. Hmm. 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 Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. 
Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Guess what? When God keeps your soul, you will not be ashamed. When you feel shame in any area of your life, you need to ask God, God, keep my soul right now because shame will destroy you. You know, some of you are looking over the internet, you know, and maybe some of you here are going, oh man, he must really have his act together. I wonder what he's gone through. Let me tell you something, when you're a little boy and you're molested, and you don't want anybody to find out about it, and it's your biggest, darkest secret, shame would torment me as a little child. And even as I grew, I I was a teenager, shame grabbed me. But when Jesus got a hold of my soul, the shame left. You know why? Because he kept my soul from the shame and the condemnation and all that garbage. When Dr. Larry Pilon a uh, psychologist put me on a biofeedback machine, that biofeedback machine will get the truth out of you. Because if you have any stress, that computer, that device, shows it. He put me on that thing, and he said, you flatlined it. And he had me talk about it. Because see, when you're on computer biofeedback, that was an instrument we used to use at the children's home to help the kids with counseling. Stress comes up. And I'm telling you, right now, in Jesus' name, that it, 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 you know, he said, you flatlined it. And I said, yeah. Because that doesn't control my life anymore. So you hook somebody up and you ask them, You talk to them about the areas in their life that they've been hurt the most. And that machine gives you a graph and it tells you how much stress you have. But as you start getting the victory, every time you get hooked up, it goes lower and lower. And then you finally flatline it. We used to tell them about Jesus and and, and, and the things of the Lord and the little children's there, you know, uh, 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 from week to week, it was incredible how the chart would just drop. That was living proof that they were healed. We were giving them proof, you're healed. Remember how it was up here, look at it now. And they would go. I have scientific proof that my soul, my will, my inner me was healed. My God, my God. I could do a dance on that one, but I'll stay nice and calm for the saints. Hallelujah. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Trust in God. Are you ready? Next one. Psalms 35.3. He talks to my soul. This is my favorite. You know that God's will talks to your will? You know when you're about to do something and all of a sudden we call it um, you know the little devil on one side the little angel on the other side and the little angel goes don't do that it's not nice. We don't even recognize when God speaks to us all the time. Oh, that's just your conscience. No, your conscience is the baseball glove that's catching it. Did you get that? He speaks, and what we call the conscience is a baseball glove that goes, strike, one. Good pitch, Lord. Draw out also. So we're talking, 
He talks to my soul. Are you ready? Draw out also thy spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. And guess what? You know that David went to war. He knew what it was to be in war. And Are you ready? You know what his answer for this mess was? Draw out also thy spear. What is God's spear? Ever wondered about that? Oh, get ready. Draw out also thy spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. In other words, stop their path. Stop them on their tracks. You know what God's spear is? Are you ready? Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. You know what God's spear is? His salvation. Because he speaks of the spear, and then he says, what was the spear for? To stop them in their tracks, correct? But then he says, speak to my soul. Guess what? When you're in trouble, ask God to speak to your soul. And God, you know what God's going to say to your soul? Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. You know what happens to a man or a woman when they hear God say, I am your salvation. I'm not going to save you. I am your salvation. You know that that's a difference? He doesn't say, I'm going to save you. He says, I am your salvation. Glory to God. The Lord's salvation is the spear that saves the, His children. Talk to my soul. Have you, ever, have you ever had God encourage you? you? We really should consider going, setting up a counseling session with God. It'll do wonders for you. Ask Him to speak to you. And we finish with this, 1 John 3, 2. You know what happens to your soul after you go through all of this? You know what happens to your soul? It becomes like his soul. His will becomes your will. You become like him. These steps that... You, let me tell you something. You need to take this whole series and chew it and chew it. When I was a little boy, how many of you guys remember bazooka bubble gum? Man, that was some great stuff. And I used to chew as much as I could so I could blow the biggest bubble. You know, you were really something if you could blow that big bubble. But I used to chew that gum until I had, I did, I, you know, we didn't have very much money, so I would chew that till every, how, how many of you chewed it till you couldn't taste anything? It was just rubber. That's what I did. That's what I'm going to do with the Word of God. You need to take this teaching and do that. Get all of it. So 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now. Women of God, men of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. But listen. And it doth, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. You know, you, you, you look at a little child and, and he looks a certain way and you look at him when they're 24, 25 and you go, my Lord. I don't see no diaper on that kid. It doesn't appear yet. Are you ready? But we know that, say, we know. That's, this is what this does to your soul, everything. It'll get you to a place where you know. But we know that when He shall appear, when we see Him in His fullness, you know what the biggest surprise is going to be? I used to think it was seeing Him. I've always known he's all powerful, he's all this, he's all loving, he's perfect. But when I see myself like him, 
That's going to be the big surprise. Listen to this. When He shall appear, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. As you see God as He is right now. What He does to your soul. What, what, what He set up for your free will. You're, you're going to see Him as He really is. You're not going to see a religious God that doesn't have a heart, and you're not going to see a God that's so legalistic that maybe one soul might get saved in the planet. But you know what you're going to see? For we shall see Him as He is. You'll be, see, you get transformed when you deal with His will, when you see Him. And I'm going to stop with this. I love what this old man said many, many years ago. You know what he said? Look at the face. The best thing about spending time with God is you get to be like Him. He'll contaminate you. My God, I want to catch it, don't you? Okay, so we finish in Jesus' name. Father God, we seal this message, this series, in the tablets of their heart and their soul. Right now, Father God, we want to please you. We want to please You. We want to be like You. Lord, so many people are Elvis impersonators. They want to be like Elvis. We want to be like You. Hallelujah! Thank You, Master. And if you've never given your heart to Jesus and you're watching over the internet or you're here, you need to give your heart to Jesus right now. Don't be like the head of the motorcycle gang I was with. He waited too late. He waited too late. And he left this planet without Jesus. Not good. Not good. Can you imagine how terrifying it would be to stand in front of God and knowing that you've rejected him? My God. So give your hearts to Jesus. And after you do, you tell somebody. You don't need me to grab you by the hand and, you know, give you a lollipop. You know how to get right with God. Have you ever noticed that? You know, I got right with God without a preacher or nobody. I was in my living room. I, I got saved. Didn't need a book to read. Oh, this is what you do. No, sirree. I knew. My friends used to tell me, you know, I remember one Christian said, you know, you're on your way to hell. And I said, Yeah. And all my friends will be there with me. Tell me something I don't know. Duh. Accept Jesus as your personal Savior. He's the only way, the truth, and the life. And I'll preach that till the day I die. I'm not going to compromise. There's one way, one God, one Savior, that's Jesus Christ. All right, God bless you guys. Don't stick around too long because we've got to, you know, clear out for the next service. Man, guys, this coming Sunday, we're going to know the difference and we're going to be ready for the next season. We're going to be the head and not the tail. We'll be above only and not beneath. And all these blessings shall overtake you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wait till you hear the testimonies. It's hard for me not to talk about it. Hallelujah. We'll bless you. Let's throw our kiss up to God. Communion. Those of you in the front row, you can walk up to the right and the left and you can have communion. It's your own little package and so forth. Glory to God. Those of you that are on the different rows in front of you, behind the chair in front of you, you'll see communion and you'll be able to, to take that. All right? Now, next Sunday, I'm serious. Something incredible. It, it's, you guys are so happy. 
You know what happens when you start thanking God for blessing somebody else? You're going to have a, listen, if you're not, if you're going through stuff and, you know, financially and different things and so forth, I'm going to tell you something. You start thanking God for Him blessing somebody else, and it's over. I know, I've done it. I, 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 I've started to get jealous because God's, you know, started blessing somebody. Come on, I'm telling you the truth. I'm not going to lie up here. Hallelujah. And that, that, that jealousy, well, I've done more than they have. Why are they? Got, and all of a sudden, no, stop. No, shut up. Praise God that they got blessed. Lord, bless them more. And all of a sudden, the windows of heaven open up over me. Hallelujah. And I find myself getting on my spiritual swimming trunks because I have to swim in the blessing. Let's throw our smooch up to Jesus. You ready? God bless you guys.